we will start now the second panel and um, the speaker of the second panel uh, will be now Mr. Andrzej Bozinowski. And uh, we will be able to hear the opinion about ending the digital white west of disinformation in Europe, protecting free speech in the age of algorithms. Hello, uh, thank you all for having me. My name is Andrei uh, Bozinovsky. I'm a prospective PhD uh, student at the Faculty of Law in Zagreb, Croatia, under the guidance and mentorship of uh, distinguished professor Davor Derenčinović, uh, who also, uh, consult, whom I also consulted in uh, preparation of this topic. Uh, first of all, let me tell you that uh, my presentation today will be a mix of, uh, of uh, lecture, which I presented uh, to capture the very essence of fighting disinformation in Europe, uh, which will be coupled with my experience, uh, practical experience in fighting disinformation uh, in uh, North Macedonia. Uh, first of all, uh, let's start uh, uh, with the presentation. Uh, my presentation is divided on four topics, as you can see uh, before you. It's, uh, the first one is the rise of the artificial intelligence. The second one is the big four and content moderation. The third one is Cambridge Analytica scandal. And the fourth one is EU legislation strikes back. Uh, for the rise of artificial intelligence, over the last years, machine learning technologies uh, have become increasingly important tools for shaping and arbitrating online information. Uh, AI power tools rely on the collection and processing of vast amount of personal data, which in turn are frequently monetized and are often used for detecting, evaluating and moderating content at a scale oftentimes with a view to identify and filter out illegal and potentially harmful content as the previous participants have stated. However, uh, AI can be divided as a marketing tool, which is the most commonly used, and as a legal tool uh, for uh, purposes of artificial policing and artificial distribution of justice. As uh, this can be demonstrated by the uh, uh, Supreme Court of Kansas verdicts in Loomis versus Kansas, uh, Kansas case, where uh, the uh, profile artificial intelligence, the use of artificial intelligence policing have led to mass discrimination on the basis of gender, basis of skin color and uh, ethnicity, when it comes uh, when it comes to uh, uh, automatically processing processing of data. However, uh, that is a that is a topic which is uh, still under consideration and uh, still under research. And uh, once it's concluded, the results will be uh, available. Uh, let's stick out to the uh, artificial intelligence as a marketing tool. Uh, it's a broad concept using policy discussions to refer to many different types of technology greatly influences and impacts the way people seek, receive, impart, and access information, and how they exercise their right to freedom of expression in the digital ecosystem. If implemented responsibly, it can benefit societies, uh, but there is a general risk that uh, its deployment by states and private companies such as inter intermediaries the big social media companies, and of course, consultant companies, such as Cambridge Analytica, former Cambridge Analytica, now other consultant companies, could have a deteriorating effect of human rights. Let me illustrate that to the following example. Uh, the big foreign content moderation. Do you remember the 56K dial-up modem back in the 90s, uh, when the internet was still considered uh, progress? In the timeline from back then to today, the internet changed the very fabric of our society. You have all heard about the big four, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Apart from propagating open and open and connecting world, these companies store massive amount of data, your data, which is used in not so much bona fide purposes. Uh, their way of operating, back to the question of content moderation. What exactly is content moderation? Well, to put it plainly, Content moderation is oversight of the material posted on the internet. That's the simplest definition we can get. This means that content is curated according to your profile and your purpose. This stretches from online shopping in Zara, Massimo Dutti, to academia, conspiracy, hatred, and eventually hate speech, even genocide. 
Through content moderation, Facebook inspired violence in India and Sri Lanka. Even UN investigators have confirmed that the use of Facebook played a determining role in stirring up hatred, of, uh, hatred and genocide against Rohingya Muslims in, in Myanmar. Of course, the abuse of data led to tampering with the uh, democratic right to vote, as we can see from 2016 elections uh, of Donald Trump and Ted Cruz campaign in Iowa. Uh, just see the, the role of Facebook in other media giants uh, in this, and you will, uh, you will automatically know that they sell data to consultant companies, which in turn abuse the user data and create specialized contents for each person according to their profile. Well, when brought before court, their defense is that every user has the paramount right to free speech, which in the USA is protected under the First Amendment. In addition, these companies are protected by something which is called the CDA law or CDA Act, which is Communications Decency Act. This act that, they, they, uh, that dates back from the 90s, uh, when the internet was still in development, was predominantly used to, uh, against pornography. However, the CDA tried to restrict inappropriate sites with fines and prison times, pornographic sites, uh, through fines and prison times. In 1997, the US, Supreme, no, no, please uh, uh, scroll back to the previous slide where uh, Cambridge Analytica comes second, Maria, thank you. Uh, in 1997, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down a large portion of the law and declared that it was not in line with the Constitution for a Constitution's First Amendment. However, in this process, uh, uh, a vital piece of information has prevailed, which protects the big companies, which is uh, uh, paramount to their defense when uh, come to court. It's the Section 230 of the CDI, of the CDA. So uh, section uh, 230 states that no provider shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided. This means that Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter are, uh, are recognized by law as new stands, not the publisher. They're, uh, they're the, the, in the eyes of the law, they're treated as, uh, uh, as, uh, uh, as a platform for curating the content, but not creating the content. Therefore, they're not liable to any uh, civil suits or criminal charges against hate speech. The publisher is the person who has published the information, but not Facebook, because it's protected under, the, uh, under Section 230 of the, of the Communication Decency Act passed by Congress. Of course, uh, the CDA also contained the Good Samaritan Clause uh, for removal of any hate speech material which goes against the community standards. However, uh, that is left uh, to the will of the companies. Uh, I will. I mention. I recall this was mentioned by uh, uh, by Bartholomew in the first presentation. Moving on, uh, you have all heard of Cambridge Analytica. How that uh, consulting company? No, no. Uh, it was the previous slide. Please, yes, yes. Uh, you know, you have, being familiar with Cambridge Analytica scandal, you have all know that uh, the data, the personal data of 87 million Facebook users was uh, sold by, the, uh, by Facebook to the British consulting company, Cambridge Analytica, for the purpose of political advertising. The data was collected through an application which was called, this is your digital life, harmless application, which consisted of a series of questions to build psychological profiles of 87 million Facebook users and collected the personal data of the user's uh, friends, uh, of those users' friends uh, via Facebook open graph platform. Cambridge Analytica used that data to provide analytical assistance uh, to the Ted Cruz and Donald uh, Trump campaign and also, but not yet confirmed to the UK Brexit referendum. Here in this chapter, I would like just to uh, focus on the do so campaign, which was, uh, pro which was done by Cambridge Analytica in Trinidad and Tobago. And also bear in mind that Romania and Lithuania are the only countries in Europe to have cooperated with Cambridge Analytica. Uh, so the Do So campaign uh, is, you, this can be seen by the famous uh, uh, digital hack uh, documentary, which was made it. The Do So campaign is, uh, also published on YouTube as a promotional video for Cambridge Analytica. The digital campaign in Trinidad and Tobago focuses uh, focus for the main two political parties. One is for Afro-Caribbeans, 
And the second one is for Indian Caribbeans. There are two political parties in Trinidad and Tobago, and Cambridge Analytica was working for the Indian <coughs> Caribbean party. Uh, and uh, they have suggested a methodology which targeted the youth. And through their methods, they have suggested that they increase apathy of voting. Of voting. The campaign would be non-political, reactive. So they have invented the join the gang method, do something cool, be part of the gang. So they've come up with the do so campaign. As you can see, uh, the do so campaign in this uh, is in the right bottom corner. Uh, that was the slogan that turned into powerful political message which symbolized rejection of the previous government. From profile of the, gen of the gathered information on Facebook and data, Cambridge Analytica concluded that all Afro-Caribbean kids uh, wouldn't vote because they do so, and all the Indian Caribbean kids would, do, would uh, do what their parents told them to do, which is go out and vote. They had fun with the do-so campaign, but would not go against the parents' wishes. I'm not, uh, this is, I'm not making any uh, suggestions. This is the uh, promotional video of Cambridge Analytica, and I'm quoting. Uh, so basically, the, the Indian Caribbean party in the Trinidad and Tobago won, which has hired the uh, Cambridge Analytica, and their uh, election victory is uh, examined today by their Supreme Court. And uh, how the EU legislation treats this? Well, uh, my fourth, uh, my fourth uh, uh, slide. Can you please move on to the next slide? Thank you. Uh, my fourth slide is EU legislation strikes back. Online platforms in the EU have created significant benefits for consumers innovation and helped the European Union internal market become more efficient. And uh, this opened, opened up new opportunities to variety of European businessmen and traders to facilitate their expansion and access to new markets. However, uh, as the uh, digital media and social platforms evolve, the, uh, we need to make sure that European uh, legislation evolves with them. A core concern is the trade and exchange of legal goods, services, and content online, which sparks hate speech uh, and uh, hate crime. Online services are also being misused by manipulative algorithms, by the, uh, as reported by the European Commission, uh, and by those algorithmic systems to amplify the spread of disinformation and other harmful uh, content and for harmful purposes. Um, and that is why the new challenges and the way platform address them have significant ample fundamental rights online. Despite a range of targeted sector-specific intervention review level, there are still significant gaps and legal burdens to address. Currently, under the European Commission, there's a new piece of legislation, uh, which is called the Digital Services Act which is uh, still under ratification process, but still not ratified. Uh, uh, and by the G Digital Services Act, there's also the jurisprudence of the European Court of Justice and the European Court of Human Rights, which fills in the legal gap. And of course, on Europe also, with the most important is the GDPR. GDPR made a substantial progress in protection of our data in the EU, gave us data ownership, as our as users, as well as EU accession countries, where it, uh, where their privacy laws are shaped and modeled after the GDPR, the data controller position is a very important position, which is uh, has a full oversight and the use of that data and privacy and for what purpose. The Facebook even quoted that the GDPR provisions are so good they are planning to implement them in their internal bylaws for tackling harmful online content, and. Um, Back to the Digital Services Act, it's an important instrument in creating safer digital space uh, in which the fundamental rights of all users and digital services are protected. Uh, its implementation will share, uh, shape the scope of data ownership and offer a better protection of our privacy. However, we, uh, the legislators, we as young scientists must uh, come forth, of course, uh, the academic community must come forth and uh, force on some kind of some way the politicians that uh, to tackle 20, 21st, uh, 21st century challenges we need 21st century legislation. So the only country in the world which can have uh, control over the big four is the United States government. The US legislators must revisit the issue of Article 2, 230 of the CD, CDA, introduce modern standards for data protection uh, or maybe take some European standards of data protection, which are, which are on the highest level of protection. 
Uh, also, they can set an example as the European Union did in guaranteeing free speech on social media as well as tackles, uh, tackle all malicious form opposite uh, of free speech, which is harmful or hate speech, uh, speech which is based off the intent of uh, discrimination. And uh, having that in mind, <clears throat> now in this, uh, in this corner, I would like to uh, share my personal experience with uh, fighting misinformation. Uh, working on uh, as a legal advisor, uh, because I juggle my professions, one is the academic profession, which offers me access to theory and academic reasoning. And the other one is the practical uh, approach, which I implemented as a legal advisor to the Macedonian Judges Association. Uh, working on a project with the, uh, with the uh, Macedonian Judges Association and with the Macedonian government, we uh, and, uh, we have discovered that there is a uh, the ton of disinformation coming up from the high profile cases in, within the judiciary of the country, when uh, often public uh, public speakers such as our former prime minister, public uh, service uh, servicemen such as our former uh, prime minister, now have been indicted. So uh, to tackle that problem, to tackle that issue, we have created the Judicial Media Council. The Judicial Media Council is an online platform. Uh, it's a, sorry, an online platform. It's a platform for a non non formal platform where judges and journalists can come together and discuss the way how the information from the court will be given to journalists in order to prevent misinformation in the public because the public is very interested about these cases and we know that uh, today's journalism is not the the traditional scope of journalism with. Uh, outlet and cameras and everything. We know that every fool with an access to a keyboard can call themselves a journalist and spread misinformation due to the, um, uh, the way he or she perceives things. So uh, we have worked on this uh, and I'm proud to say that we have created two ways of tackling uh, disinformation. The first one is organizing outreach program, which is called Law School for Journalists. And the second one was uh, called the Journalism School for Judges. And uh, we taught journalists how to uh, how the legal jargon, which is used for uh, which is used in the in, uh, in judicial cases, and uh, how the best to publish the information without harming the presumption of innocence. And also, we taught judges on how to avoid heavy legal language when speaking when speaking to the public. Also, do not speak legalese because the public does not have a degree in law. You know. And uh, the best, uh, the best, uh, the best thing is our legislation. Uh, in coming from North Macedonia, uh, we modeled our legislation, anti-hate crime legislation, after Croatia. I have to say that Republic of Croatia has a very developed hate speech and uh, hate speech and hate crime uh, uh, developed legislation because they implemented OSCE uh, recommendation of tackle and pact programs within the police sector of the country, which, uh, uh, which obligates police, uh, police officers to undergo rigorous training on how to detect, identify, and report hate speech and hate crime, uh, which makes Croatia uh, one of the top countries in Europe on how to handle hate speech uh, and also hate crime. And uh, their legislation and criminal law also is in line with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, modern, the most modern standards of European Court of Human Rights, uh, such as the, uh, the, uh, the implementation of the verdicts uh, of, the, for example, Delphi and Estonia, and also a high standard GDPR. So uh, yes, and uh, with that, I would like to con conclude my presentation. And I believe we have touched on the all the scopes of the uh, importance of tackling Wild West on disinformation in Europe. And I believe if we implement the Digital Services Act and uh, we act accordingly, we will prevent the Wild West disinformation and the use of our personal data, of our cells, by consulting companies to uh, deliver us content moderation uh, and uh, prevent uh, hate speech. Uh, thank you very much.